Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to uh, Stock Markets with Bruce. Uh, it's Uncle Bruce here for Friday, May the 28th, uh, uh, 2021. How you doing today? What a fun day uh, we're going to have today, I think. Uh, and it's supposed to be a quiet day, typically, on a day like today. You know, usually the Friday before uh, Memorial Day is pretty quiet times, but it's been active in the pre-market here already um, all morning. I have been up for, uh, oh gosh, I've been up for uh, almost three hours. I've been up, I, I could not sleep until even three o'clock. I had to get up. i um, been watching the pre-markets on uh, AMC and GameStop and the markets in general. And uh, uh, just to see what, what's going on and where we headed. Um, and uh, keep an eye on CNBC, see what they're doing and who they're bringing on to talk about these stocks and what's, what's happening. Can you explain the writing contracts more? I have 700 shares at a $7 average on AMC. Oh, man. Um, you can offer your stock by selling call contracts against them where you're just saying, uh, um, I'm offering my shares for like uh, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever contract you want to write. Check the option chain uh, values. Um, and you could probably write a 20, uh, I bet you you could write a $30 contract for like a month right now and get more than seven dollars a share in cash and all you're doing is you're offering your stock at 30 bucks a share for like four or six weeks um and if you take it and and you're getting seven dollars of cash right now like now instantly in your hand so you've got 700 shares you're getting 4900 dollars cash right now that's what you paid for it you can do whatever you want with that money theoretically i just leave it in your account um and you 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 can't do anything with your stock for six weeks as long as those contracts are out there if you want to end the, the game, if the shares go back to 25 and those contracts drop to $4, you could buy them back and keep the $3 difference as your little profit today. Uh, or if uh, if uh, the shares next week uh, back off to 20 bucks a share for like a half a day, you can buy those calls back probably for two and a half, three dollars and you'll lock in four, four fifty. These share these contracts, you might be able to get eight or ten bucks for them this morning. I I don't know the exact price yet. The market isn't open for options. But you know, if you sold them for ten, and you can buy them back for three. You'll clear seven dollars a share, even though your shares have gone back down. You'll, you've got your seven dollars, which is all the money you paid for the stock, and you still got your stock. And no one's going to buy your stock from you for thirty if it's trading at twenty. Um, great, you bought the contracts back. Fine, stock goes back to twenty five, twenty six. Can't get the thirty again, but kind of gets up. You might write thirty dollar contracts again for a month or two out. You might bring in six, eight, ten bucks again in cash, offering your stock at thirty, and sit back and just go, okay, go, go to forty and take me out. I'm I'm selling out of thirty-seven, thirty plus the seven dollars I just got, or thirty plus the ten dollar premium I just got. I'm getting out at forty. Fine, uh, take, give me all this money. It's all profit now. I already got my seven dollars out of this thing. Now it's all profit. But if it doesn't. It doesn't go back up over 30. It gets to 27, 28, and then it peters back to 20 again. Those calls, again, will drop in value because call contracts do what stocks do. They go up and down with the stock. Um, this is free money for you shareholders of AMC. I mean, it is free hand over fist money just being handed to you in a crazy, ridiculous market. And your timing couldn't be better. <laughs> You're going into a Memorial Day weekend where everyone's excited about getting out. Uh, whoop de doo uh, AMC theaters will be full this weekend. whoop de doo Are you going to go to an AMC movie every weekend for 52 straight weekends? You're not going to do that. There's, no one does that. No, The only people who are at the AMC theater 52 weeks of the year are the people who are working for minimum wage, cleaning the floors and selling the popcorn. And even those folks are part-timers and, and they're not there every bloody weekend. No one is there every weekend, <laughs> especially customer. Um, Will AMC be sold out every weekend? No. Uh, for the first month or two, maybe. But for the next 52 weeks in a row, 104 weeks in a row, no. No, because things will calm down again. As we get more back to normal, we do all our normal things again. And it doesn't mean going to the theater every Friday night. It, we, don't, we never did that. And up until 2019-20, movie attendance had been falling every year in the movie theaters. It's always been falling. And it's going to continue to fall. It's got a blip now, but it'll continue to fall. And uh, movie theater chains are going to go broke. They're, they're, they're going to consolidate. They might merge into each other to try to stave off elimination. This company has got to renegotiate its $5.5 .5 in loans. 
because they're not selling stock in the open market, which they should be doing right now. They should be selling the stock right now and bringing in cash. But they can't. Um, they can't do that. Um, so there you have it. Could this AMC price movement cause a squeeze, though? Um, I don't think there's going to be a squeeze. Um, I don't think there is a squeeze. I, 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 uh, I'm convinced that um, there is more stock out there than you can imagine on AMC to be borrowed. And I don't think that many shares are shorted on it. I, I, I think it's more of a wishful thinking thing um, that the shares are trading what be, the way they're trading because retail investors are just all over the stock. Um, and that's, this is a good sign. Like, this is a positive sign for me that retail investors can make a, mo a market move like this. It's fantastic. Uh, it could come into the GameStop story. I think it already has. I mean, we're up, frankly, let's be fit. Let's face it. At 260 a share, the stock was what, 160 two weeks ago? Uh, hello, 50% uh, gain would have taken you to 240. We're at 260. So every one of you in the GameStop shares have to thank the AMC shareholders and the AMC speculators around the world for this move on your stock. The question I have is how long is it going to last? If AMC falters and gets back into the eighteen twenty dollar range, which is still a phenomenal move, I mean, remember the all time high was twenty bucks back in January, and we hadn't seen anything near it since. Phenomenal to hold that. Uh, but will GameStop go back to two ten or two hundred because this goes back to eighteen or twenty? What happens if AMC goes to twelve bucks a share, which is still incredible? They raised four hundred million plus dollars at nine fifty a share three weeks ago. Uh, what will that do to GameStop? Will it go to 190, 180, 190? Um, it, it could. Will it? I don't know. It, but it, it could. There's speculation everywhere. I mean, there's just so much margining going on. There's so much, uh, you know, gambling going on on this. Do you think a GameStop is squeezing anymore? I don't think GameStop is squeezing now. Uh, GameStop is not squeezing. Uh, GameStop is moving in sympathy. And I think there are a lot of retail investors who are watching what's happening on AMC and they're going, well, if AMC is going up, I'm buying GameStop because one always does what the other does. That's what, that's what a lot of this is, I think. Uh, we've heard about it a billion times. I mean, I keep getting these, do you notice the similarity between the charts? Uh, I get this all the time. Oh, uh, they're just the same, you know. Uh, the companies are the same. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, but, you know, people just... just they're into the hype, man. They're into the hype, the promo, the excitement, the you know, the, all the action. I mean, you want action? We got action. Uh, action on GameStop. Action on on AMC. Absolutely, we we have action. Action, but you have to decide how the action affects you. Now, some of you out there, hey, um, if you were to sell your GameStop right now, all of it, right now, just sell it, and and just do this. I bet you in the next week or two, you can buy your GameStop back at 200 a share. That's my guess. It's just a bet. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying it could. And you guys could be going, you know what? I, I might sell some of my GameStop and take advantage of this stupid price increase. It's incredible. It's been 60, 70% on my stock. Why don't I take some money off the table and I'll, I'll buy it back? I'm suggesting to take money off the table. The easy way to do it is write call contracts against your GameStop. Don't be afraid of this move in the last week. Embrace the move. Say, thank you. Thank you for the 50% price increase. Thank you. I'll take another. Take me to 390. Give me another 50%. 130 bucks more on a 260 stock. Take me to 390. I dare you. I double dare you. I triple dare you. Write $300 contracts. Good for a month. Take the 40, 50 bucks right now. Cash. Take it. Just sit on it. Just sit on it. Um, you're selling out at 350 a share. Okay. You're selling at 350. Dare to be taken out at 350 on a 260 stock. Are you richer? You should be. Uncle Bruce bought one VGAC call October 15 for 45 cents. My first. It's an, at 80 cents right now. Why is the stock price flat yet options price moving higher? Is my call a good call? You got a good call there. Um, um, I'm happy with everything and the price you paid and all that. Uh, why are the contracts going higher with the stock not moving? That is your sign. That is a tip right there that something big is expected. When you see premiums rise on a stock, like you've seen all week on AMC, on GameStop, the premiums have been rising on all of these stocks, even with the shares not moving up. 
Now our SPACs are starting to get larger premiums on the, on the contracts. There's, there is anticipated movement coming and that's what you want to hear. That's what you want to see. That's got to get you excited. It gets me excited. That is the tip off that something is about to break and I love it. Uncle Bruce, didn't the shareholders approve the IPOE SoFi deal? So shouldn't this affect the share price? Uh, doesn't it seem to have moved at all? Uh, there was no announcement made uh, in the big world about it. Um, I think what the big announcement will be, the one that we're waiting for, and that will probably affect this thing, the SoFi stock symbol change on, uh, I guess, Tuesday morning, I guess. Um, that's what we're waiting for, Doug. That's where we... You know, where the market as uh, the big market as a whole will learn of the first time uh, they will completely all know about the SoFi thing. Right now, 3% of the market knows about IPOE and SoFi. The other 97% are oblivious to the, to the reality. They're going to find out soon enough as soon as it starts trading at SoFi. As SoFi. So just hang in there, Doug. One long weekend to go. It's going to be a long, long weekend for you, I tell you. But I think we're going to have some fun here. TGIF, Bruce, what contracts and timeline do you think are best to write this afternoon for AMC in light of the current price activity and AMC's poor financial position? Uh, I tell you right here, uh, if you can be writing $35 calls right now, I'd be doing it. Uh, I, I would be writing them for next week or the week after or the week after that. Uh, even if you wrote them for two months out and you can bring in 10 or 12 bucks, I take it. I would take that deal. That's like selling for $47. Um, and if the shares sit at 20, 25, <clears throat> you brought in 12 bucks cash already. Nice going. Uh, and then you can write maybe 28s or 30s down the road again. Uh, nicely done. Uncle Bruce, I sold a 611. Uh, covered calls at 240 strike. Uh, now afraid of being assigned, buy back and sell the new uh, 611 265. Small loss on the contract, but if I'm taken out, it would be much better price or, or just wait. These, these are great questions. You're 261 on your stock right now, 260 on your stock. All right, so you're you're 20 in the money, and as each day goes by, that, that 240 contract's value will shrink because whatever premium is on it will shrink away to be just a book value trade, right? Even up to the last day, um, Friday the 11th of uh, June, uh, that contract will come down to, from 22 to 21 to 20 if the stock's a 260 and you're a 240 call. It'll start trading at 2021 a share, a contract. You can buy it back then and write a 265 for the next Friday or two Fridays out or a 280 or, or whatever, and you'll probably get just as much money for it. So you can do that then. Um, you don't need to do it now. Now, today, right while we're talking, if the shares go to 250 this afternoon or this morning in the next 20 minutes, they're 250. You're only 10 in the money. Uh, you might find that the contract is trading at $14, $16 from where it's at right now. I'm not sure what's trading at right now. Um, it'll back off because if the stock drops 10 bucks, your contract will probably drop five or four or six, something like that. That might be appealing enough to you to do a rollover and and get out of the ele the six eleven and and write maybe a six eighteen, write a contract for the next week but a two eighty, but you might wait if it if it's a two fifty and you see it coming back up again the two fifty two fifty three fifty four you hold off let it get back to two fifty five fifty nine it gets back to here two sixty now write a two eighty or a two ninety for a six eighteen and you'll bring in even more money or as much money as it costs you to buy these back and you've done that you can look at that object right now it's 257 256 right now it's coming down while i'm talking to you about it all right keep an eye on it keep an eye on it bruce how do how do you pick your buy recommendations uh, appreciate your big fish but i want to learn how to fish uh you know what i do i, I don't tell people this uh you know, th th this is inside information but i'll give you a hint um and and i you know don't pass this on but um I've got a dart board and I got these darts and I just put, I just take random letters and I put them all over the dart board and I put a blindfold on and I just throw darts at the board. And then Jennifer, she takes the letters that the dart lands and she puts them off to the side and I just keep throwing darts. And then every once in a while we get the, enough letters in combination that they make up stocks. And then I recommend it to you. Simple, really. It's it's easy. Uh, it's a piece, of, except for the except for one problem. 
there are times where the darts don't land on the board and they hit the wall. So there's this one wall in our living room that's pretty beat up. So, you know, it's not, it's not perfect, but I'm telling you, I've been, I've been lucky with it. I uh, just come up with all kinds of crazy stock symbols, and here we are. It's just insanity. <laughs> Woohoo! Uncle Bruce, I'm confused on terms when you describe making smart money. When you say scoop them up on covered calls, do you mean buy a contract or write a contract? What's the difference in when is the money made total noob? So if you're if you're selling contracts, like let's say that you know GameStop this morning hit the two sixty eight. Um, if you sold three hundred dollar call contracts this morning or three twenties or three fifties, you know, way out of the money, even a week or two out, you could have brought in maybe thirty, forty, fifty bucks a contract. It all depends on which one you're talking about. And then as the stock is backing off from two sixty eight here to two forty. Uh, you know, that's a $28 drop on the stock price. I mean, those call contracts will drop in value. Well, you can buy them back at less than what you sold them for and keep the difference as a nice little day trade flip on your stock without risking your stock as you're writing contracts way up there. However, uh, there are people who will say, ah, but Bruce, Bruce, you were saying to people when the stock was 160, 170, 180, that you should be writing 210s and 220s and that type of thing. Those people are now in the money. Those shares, those contracts are way in the money. And I'm going, yeah, that's true. That, that is true. However, uh, keep in mind that the day isn't over and we are at 240, 243 on the stock right now. These 220 contracts that were at $45 each yesterday, this morning, are now probably down around 20, 25. And if you wrote them for 15, you're only 10 bucks out of the money on these things. Uh, your stock in the meantime went from 160, 170 to 243 a share. So if you buy the call back and lose 10 on the call, but you made 70 on your stock, you're up $60 on your program, and you can, whenever you want, let's say the shares go back up to 250 60 today, you can write $300 contracts tonight or Tuesday morning or Wednesday, whatever you want. And the game doesn't end. It's not like a one shot and it's over, you won or you lost. It's an ongoing affair with writing calls, buying calls, buying calls back, creating them, buying them back at a lower price. It's always an ongoing thing. And no matter how the shares react, you're always in, quote, the game. Um, the bottom line is if you had stock at 160 and you wrote 210 calls and you 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 you, you get taken out uh, with a $15 premium, you're taken out at 225, you were at 160, you're up 65 bucks a share. You buy your stock back, whether it's here at this price, it comes back down to 200, it's whatever, wherever it's at, wherever you buy it at, you're writing contracts, 20, 30, 40, $50 out of the money, for the next week or two or three, and you're hitting it again with another uh, premium, you're taking the money in, and you do dare them to come and take you out for another $50, $60 flip again. You make $50, $60 bucks a flip on buying stock getting taken out, buying stock getting taken out because you're writing call contracts, and the stock went up each time like that, you are getting rich uh, because you are rolling over your, your stock, and you're rolling over your money, and it's more money each and every time. Have that happen five, 10 times up to 600 a share? Fine with me. But there will come a day and a moment and a time and a, and a week <clears throat> where you write a call contract on a 242 stock, you write a 280 call contract, bring in 25 bucks a share for a two or three week contract, and the stock sits at between 220 and 240 for a week. That contract dies worthless. That 25 is all yours, and you can write another one all over again. You may find that every fourth or fifth call contract that you write, um once you get taken out and the other four times you don't or once you lose five or ten bucks on that contract and the other times you score your 15 and 20 and 25 dollars per contract every time you will make more money than by just sitting and holding and doing nothing that's the name of this game and that's that's what i'm trying to help you folks with with whatever stock you have if you own amc and you this morning wrote 40 dollar call contracts and you're now at 30 bucks a share you might be buying those things back at five bucks less a contract from this morning did you write 10 of them you, you made 500 dollars times 10 contracts five grand profit writing calls this morning and buying them back five bucks later down the road i mean there's there's opportunities did you buy any puts this morning on GameStop? Did you buy any puts this morning on AMC when they were at their highs? If you did, you're scoring right now. You can cash in and take a score. There are day trades available, even being a shareholder, and it's on a conservative basis. Uh, something to think about. This is why we're going to have classes, kids. We're going to have classes. I'm just learning options. What I'm risking 
to buy call contracts on a SPAC. Worst case scenario, someone said if the SPAC fails, the option is worthless. Well, if the if the SPAC does not deliver a, a return beyond what your exercise price is, and your exercise date comes and goes, your option could be worthless. Um, on the other hand, oh excuse me, if you buy a call contract and you're buying call contracts on IPOE and you're buying twenty two fifties. Um, the stock goes to 3250 anytime during the year, the time you had your contract in effect for, you're going to make a lot of money. Uh, so uh, hang around, enjoy the show, and enjoy the classes, and we'll have fun. So if GameStop, oh my gosh, these comments, I can't keep up with them all, uh, is above 270 or so, uh, might want to sell some and buy in lower. I uh, find it odd people saying you're, you're pro-hedgy. Is it simply GameStop being more predictable now? Uh, well, this morning, uh, I was looking at this market going, you know, this AMC is up 7 bucks a share on 100-plus million shares. GameStop was up 4 bucks, And I'm saying this AMC does any kind of a pullback. This GameStop's going to drop $15, $20 a share. And it did. Uh, and I thought, you know, sell your stock at 267 268 And right now, here first thing this morning, Sell it, buy it back at 245. I mean, if it's going to give it to you, take it. Uh, or buy puts on GameStop and make a profit, a nice flip. Or write call contracts on your GameStop at 300 right now, 310, 320, whatever, and buy the contracts back as the stock drops off 20, 25, 30 bucks a share. Why, why not? And uh, some people think that's treasonous, but that's called making money with your money. Thank you, everybody, for. Uh, for that, if you'd like to talk to me about a one-hour session, you want to get together with me, send me an email through uh, my email address, which is right here. It's the old school hotmail.com email address. Send me an email. Say, Bruce, I'd like to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one session. When can you book me in? I'd like to, uh, I'd like to make a reservation and, and, and lock it in right away.